uh, Bill doesn't see color. Uh, I didn't, uh, I was, I, Gene was always a, 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 a authoritative figure and he was a wonderful producer and uh, Michael, go ahead. Michael, Michael uh, we mustn't allow this to disintegrate. <laughs> but um, but I, I just I just thought he was a, a a producer that really knew television very well. He knew what you know what people liked, and and I admired his sort of um, his ability to to give actors what they give actors what they need. Stupid consoles, so get in the mood, alright? Get in the mood. Much better. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. Those of you who've seen me before know that the first thing I do always is rearrange the furniture. So much better. Good for you. Even further back. Unplug them. There you go. It looked lovely when we came on, but it's kind of hopeless now, because those people can't see. There you go. Isn't that better? Hello. And so, actually... Michael, as you were Dorney, saying... Dorney, Dorney, you should actually... Dorney, Dorney, Dorney! You can't see Dana. Put your chair back a little bit. He was more. I, I, I never, I never thought of him as, as you know, like a father figure or anything like that. I mean, I just thought um, I admired him. And I, I love the show. I love the original show, and and so um, uh, the one thing that he did say, which I thought was smart, was that they, when they wrote the part of Worth, they didn't really have a, anything. It was just a name on a piece of paper, and they didn't say where he came from. They didn't say anything. And so the, the second or third day, I said, hey, Gene, you know, at, you know, after I got the role, before I started working, I said, what do you want from this character? What, you know, what is he supposed to be? And he just said, you know, don't, don't think about anything you've seen before or any character or any portrayal that you've seen at all. Just make the character your own. And I said, great, you know, to an actor, that's like, you know, the best thing you can do is to, is to create a character. You know, and, uh, and I like that because, you know, once you create a character, you're heavily invested in it. And he did! Yeah. Yes, you did. Did you, have, did you have any principles involved? I mean, did you have any ideas, uh, set uh, thoughts that you would work from? The only thing that I did was um, I snuck on the set because, you know, out of makeup, because these guys were already cast, like weeks before I was cast. And I was the last one cast. It was about, you know, a week of, of auditions and then that was it. And they put me on the set. Didn't even introduce me to anybody. Nobody knew who I was. And so I came on there one time without the makeup and I was watching these guys. And they were just wonderful and, and you know, Comrades, and we're going out in space and, and relationships and laughing and having a great time. And I went, okay, I'm going to do the exact opposite. <laughs> and that's what I did. I said, I'm going to be different than everybody on the set, just because I thought it would, you know, it was it was a good way to do, it, especially being a Klingon. And so I was just like pissed at everybody. <laughs> you know, they they would say. Uh, Mr. Worf, could you pick up that piece of paper? Why? <laughs> so, no. So unlike us, 
you chose to play yourself. <laughs> citizens on the ship, but it was great to have somebody who actually was doing what most of this country does, which is having a working mom, and, you know, I, I thought it um, as well as 
as just someone who is so unbelievably hot. You know. I mean, It's, you guys are awesome. It's really great to be here. Anyway. <laughs> Denise, tell us about what you were doing. Speaking of hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I was going for. Um, <laughs> boy, you know, the... the, the it was really interesting with, with Tasha. I think the, the, probably the primary thing I tried to do was make Tasha as inappropriate as I could <laughs> in any given moment. I was always looking for some way to make her um, either vulnerable or just not quite appropriate. So whenever I could, I could it wasn't a lot that, you know, there weren't a lot of moments of that, but whenever I could find it, I would, I would just, you know, aim for that. Because I, I felt that Tasha had this part of her that was deeply um, insecure about being there. And that is triggered by a scene that Marina and I had for audition piece that was never filmed. And um, it, it sort of clued me into this character. And I, I just thought it would be much more interesting to play her that way. Emily. Let's go to another question. Question over here? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got more of a statement than a question. Um, I need... Can we turn the statement into a question? You know what? Uh, maybe. Um, I need to personally thank every single one of you on stage. I speak for everyone in this room. You have touched my life in a way you could not. Yeah. My name is Feet, F-E-E-T. On the account of me not having it, I got my legs blown off in Iraq. Um, I, I, would, I would love to tell you my story. I, I, don't, I don't really have that much time. But I suffer from PTSD. For real, yeah. not that crap you hear about. And I will tell you, the thing that has pulled me from my darkest of darkest and craziest places has been this cast right here.
is the most uh, most emotional moment I've ever been connected. Um, oh, uh, you, you know, uh, these young men who come back from the wars with wounds that we can't see and wounds that we can see, we have no idea what, what they go through. And for a moment here, we, we, we have a small insight into the sacrifices that these kids make for this country. Just as a people who need to be grateful. We should send all of our kids when they're 14 to, to do a week uh, <laughs> with the military because you learn so well. I, I'm not talking about the wars, but just the understanding of the situations people were in and uh, the, just the troops from all over the world in, in Bosnia and, and the things that, that people do on our behalf. So uh, whether we agree with the wars or not, there's other ways to handle it, but the soldiers, you know, thank you. celebration of his life, of his sacrifice, but it's also a celebration of Star Trek. So we'll continue on and, um, and it's, it's part of the, part of the show, uh, part of what makes Star Trek Star Trek. What's your question? Hi, Mr. Shatner. My name right, is Ashley. Right into the microphone and nice and loud. My name is Ashley and uh, first I'd like to thank all our veterans and I could stop crying. My uh, little brother is currently in active duty in the Army and um, he wanted to be here but he couldn't because of that. Um, but he loves Star Trek just as much as I do. And my question was um, for all of you is what was your favorite episodes that you performed in and why? Everybody's favorite episode? Well, I'll start. Uh, I, have, I have two that uh, I wasn't, I, well, one I was kind of in a lot, but the other one I wasn't was um, uh, where Data builds the child called The Offspring. <laughs> And uh, the second one that they're tied for is uh, the drum head, um, which, by the way, uh, both of those episodes were directed by Johnny Franks. Two of my favorites. <laughs> I didn't like any of the Wharf episodes. <laughs> I got it. Uh, <laughs> no, you know what? I, I, it's hard for me to... Yeah, let's get them out of the way. Let's just do one. <laughs> you know what? We were... Um, we were working so hard back then. I mean, you know, comparatively. There's work and there's work, but we did a lot of hours, and uh, it's hard for me to to really think of what my favorite episode was because it seemed to me we did one long episode that was seven years long. And, um, but the only thing I can I can really say is is somewhere in that seven years I remember being really fond of the episodes that starred the character Data. I, I don't know why, I just 
should love the guy. I, yeah. But Johnny? I think the best television we ever made was the uh, best of both worlds, parts of one and two. gracious I am. Um, one was, uh, what was it called? Measure of a Man. Measure of a Man. Big data episode, yeah, big data episode. And then I also really enjoyed, for just fun reasons, Fistful of Datas. It was fun to do a cowboy episode and go to a different studio and, you know, dress up in not a space suit. You know. Go ahead. Um, I, I too thought that the, the introduction of the board was pretty amazing. I also loved the episode, and I wasn't in it much, but I loved the idea behind First Contact, and then later it became a movie. I, I'm really big into the old Prime Directive. I, I, I really like that whole philosophy. Um, and then in terms of just uh, fun, it was really fun to do Remember Me and uh, and anytime there was any minute moment of comedy in one of the most serious characters at like Data's Day or being able to do, um, you know, the tap dance or do any comedy in, um, in what was the, what's it called, The Big Goodbye. The Big Goodbye was really a lot of fun too. Boy, I, 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 I still think that Code of Honor was pretty good television writing right there. I, I, I you know, I, I really do love that episode. Um, for, very, for so many reasons, you know? So, I, I mean, the costumes alone were, were, were fabulous, you know? Bill Tice had a way with fabric and color. And, you know, and, and, the, and the forward thinking. The progressive, uh, progressive thought. thinking. You and I, you I remember those conversations we would have? And how incredible! It, it sparked, it sparked so many conversations about D race D and race exactly. and, very and, progressive, and you know, the, very progressive. The objectification of women and was so. Important. I know, I know. <laughs> and I, 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 I really can't choose. One. All seven years were so wonderful. Why don't, you, why don't you tell them what you told Whoopi in the, uh, when we did the cat I've never song. seen an episode of, uh, what's the name of the show again? The one that came after your show. The one that came after your show. Next question. question. Hi, yes, uh, my name's Andrew. Uh, what is the moment that resonated with you most on Tangent? Resonation. That's not a word. Oh. <laughs> it's resonance. It's resonance. No, it's resonance. We resonance. had an earthquake and I was in my trailer, and I mean, there was a lot of things resonating. <laughs> I actually, you know, it was the, it, I, the very first season when we were in this stupid, crappy, pardon me, junky kind of little caravans. I had never been in California. I'd never known what an earthquake was. I thought it was you two pushing my trailer. <laughs> and, and I come walking out. Come on, you guys, I'm putting on. And, and it was like, everyone's going, it's an earthquake. And I was like, terrified. But, you know, anyway. That's the story. Well, that resonates. Anybody else got a feeling about that? Speaking of you got nothing. Way, you got got nothing. John, yeah. Jonathan was was in his in his uh, trailer in the makeup trailer with me during that earthquake. Do you remember? Wait, wait, wait. You were in his trailer and no, he was no, no, no. in the makeup. That resonates. Does that resonate? That resonates. That, that, that was an earthquake. That was during the period where Denise was trying to steal my pink chenille bathrobe. Johnny was in his women's, woman's pink chenille 
bathrobe. It was cute. Cocktail. Three sizes, three sizes too small. It looked much better on you. <laughs> and he had a full hey, remember that dress that J Lo wore. You remember to the when did she wore it to the? Yeah. Remember when it was cut down to her night? Like, remember? Yeah. She was wearing two strips. That's what Johnny looked like. In the <laughs> all over his face. Remember those days? So far. That resonated for all of us. You guys are looking, you guys are looking very fondly at each other. Very like fondly. old times sake. We danced. We danced. In, in we what? Young, we sang. The we young, dance of love. I mean, what? We did uh, we only, what we like to call the jelly roll. <laughs> really? The two of you did the jelly roll. Just before or after lunch. Oh. Um, next question. Well, I have one tiny question. Right into, the, right into that mic, man. One tiny question. I'd really like Jonathan. No, make it one big question. <laughs> I'd love Jonathan Franks to step over the chair to sit down. What's your question? My, my question is, if they were to reboot TGN, who would you, each of you, like to play you in a reboot? All right. TN, you mean TNG, I'm assuming. TGN, that's uh, wrestling, right? TNG is wrestling. <laughs> TGN, the role of Commander a... William T. Riker will be played by Will Wheaton. Covers all the bases there. Not a bad actress. She'd have to wear a padded bra. Listen, I'm not saying she has to get a boob job, just the wonder bra, okay? Right. Denise, what about you? Oh, wow. I skipped. Got to keep it alive. I think, I, uh, Charlize Theron. <laughs> Admire her, Denise. Admire her? Yeah. I, you know, sleep with her, but. I... <laughs> Denise, Denise. Denise. No, um, but you I were looking so fondly at, at Jonathan. <laughs> you know. You know, it doesn't matter. It's the love it's is it, love. Love is love. Right. Love is love. Yeah, it's what about you? Well, um, you know, I mean, it could be someone like Jessica Chastain, but I actually think that I just would do a heck of a lot of plastic surgery and I could play it myself. Gates, 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 do you think if we went in together we'd get a group rate? Right? We might. <laughs> yeah, but you got me like whatever. If we three of us went in together, they'd give us a discount for like the total overhaul. <laughs> What about you, big boy? Yeah, silver, you know I mean? silver fox. <laughs> I think I could play it again right now. I, I think, uh, I think Tilda Swinton, maybe. <laughs> Michael Dorn. Well, it could be anybody really under that makeup, couldn't it, really? Oh. 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 They're gonna turn on you. They love me, really. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an English actor, uh, Idris Elba. Woo! Idris Elba! He's not much younger than us, Idris. Oh, yes, he is. Not much. Yes, he is. <laughs> Question. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I have a question for Michael. Messing up. So I was wondering if there was anything that was going to happen with Captain Morf. You know that that is that is a um, 
uh, it, it wasn't Captain Morph, it wasn't, I mean, people call it that. But it was an idea that I had a couple of years ago, and, and I wrote a script, and, and it got some traction, as they say, but uh, I think because of the J.J. Abrams universe that's uh, going on at Paramount, um, they, it just stopped. It just stopped. So. We still love you. No, I don't. But never say never. I mean, you never know what's, what, what the future, and we're in space, for God's sake, so. But that was, Actually, it, was, it, was, it was sort of an idea that I had, and, and a guy blogged about it, and it sort of like got a lot of traction, and, and then it just stopped. <laughs> Didn't have any traction after a while. But you know, never say never. Next question. Um, okay, uh, I'm Corky. Um, before I get to my question, I just want to say that one of my favorite Star Trek moments was um, the Borg cliffhanger where um, they see Lucidus and uh, Riker tells Worf to fire. Um, could um, Jonathan Frakes just repeat that line again for us? <laughs> Say fire in a crowded room. Uh, <laughs> fire at will. <laughs> Bill. He didn't ask his question. Uh, one of my favorite computer games was. Um, I'm not sure. I thought that was an answer. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got to clear this thing up. Yes. Speak into the microphone. Okay. Um, Perfect. I, I'm not sure if any of you might remember this. Uh, one of my favorite computer games was Star Trek: The Next Generation of Final Unity. I'm just wondering if any of you remember um, voice acting for computer games for Star Trek and what it was like. Was it like acting? Was it like acting for computer games? That's a question for it's you. It's really boring. <laughs> Because you have to do the same line over and over and over a hundred times. And the thing about computer games is you do the voices first and then they go off and make the game. So when I did Mass Effect, I, um, somebody asked me about it at a convention and I went, what are you talking about? Because you know, girls, when you pass the menopause, your brain turns to mush. saying, why did I come in here? You will remember this conversation. You're not getting Alzheimer's, it's the menopause, okay? I just want to get that out there. And you see, now I've forgotten what I was talking about, because I was talking about the menopause. What were we talking about? Oh, Mass Effect, right, so. She might need medical attention, but so, I'm here. Anyway. I'm here. on Mass Effect and I said no I didn't <laughs> and he said well it says it's you and I said well they're lying to sell more games <laughs> but it was me and I had forgotten that I had done it um, but it's because it is kind of tedious because you do you know you hear that you go off in different I have to be honest apart from Tetris I've never played a video game in my life so um, but it is kind of tedious to do can I say something I, I want to tell you a story about Marina uh, this is very brief, but we were all in Kansas City recently doing a convention and Marina was running across the street and she fell and broke her, her finger because she wasn't wearing proper shoes. And she's learned her lesson. It, it, look at those. I'm not going to stop wearing my heels, I'm just going to stop running in them. It's a pinky. Big deal, right? I just strapped it to the finger next door and went back. 
back to work. Because if you think I'm going to the emergency room on a Friday night in Kansas City when the basketball playoffs are happening, you've got another thing coming. But when she got to the hospital, they asked her how she broke her finger, and she didn't remember. <laughs> When Patrick's here, we take the mickey out of him. What do you mean Patrick's not, not here? here? They take the mickey out of him. Oh, I'm here, all right. When Patrick's here. No, please, no. On one way. Okay, now, now do, do Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen talks something like this. <laughs> Ian, what are you doing? Talking like you. <laughs> are you done? Shall we go to another question? Next question. My name is... I, I got to say, report, and then people would yap, 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 yap. I was done first at the end of the night. I got out of my space suit, I went over to Nicodell's. I waited for the rest of the cast to come out. They gave me a paycheck on Thursdays. So it was the greatest job in the world. <laughs> Tessa, there was a, there's, there's a great story. What's so funny? Did you take the teeth out from time to time? Oh, 
Oh, yes. When Have you ever me, seen his teeth? When he kissed me, I made him take the teeth out. No. Yes. Yeah, no, no, no I, I, I took it out when I wasn't, when I didn't have anything to say, but I, I, I had to put it in, and it was, it was really difficult. And uh, the producer, one of the producers, David Livingston, came to the set one day and said, you know, Michael, the teeth up here are fine, the false teeth that they put in, but your bottom teeth, they look too straight. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about, you know? Well, we gotta do something with your bottom teeth. And I go, wait, wait, you're saying that the fans are writing in saying, we, we would believe that he was a clean on but his bottom teeth give him away, you know? And he goes, yeah. And, and it was, but that how was... Many, how many hours would you spend per day? It started out three and a half hours a day. It started out. That was to, to get in. What about to get out? It was about 45 minutes. And, it, but it was, it was three and a half hours to get in until I think probably the third season, that's when a, a great story, my friend Marina, um, it got so bad, they put this, this uh, anybody here in the medical field, they put surgical adhesive on your, on your nose. And they wouldn't dry it or anything like that, they just slosh it on there and stick it on your nose. And there's ether base, it's oh, ether yeah. base. And it started to blister my nose. Burn. Burn my nose, burn the side of my face. And I was going to the, to the makeup guy, I said, look, uh, there's gotta be something you can do. No, there's nothing else we can do. No, this is it. No, no, no. And one day, I'm sitting in makeup, and the guy is getting ready to put it on again, and Marina goes, Donnie, look at your nose! Look at your nose! They're burning your nose! I went, yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> and she goes, now you get out of that makeup right now, and you go up there to the producers, and you tell them you're not gonna do this anymore, and I went, yeah! <laughs> I didn't say house. that. I didn't. I, but, but I went up there and they changed it. Well, anyway, the story is they changed it. But it was it was it was pretty difficult. I mean, it was like that was going to be the end of it after a while. But but it was difficult. The other thing was is that for a few years now, my friends have been saying how terrible not terrible that's not the right word for it. I, how I was very bad with my lines on the show. <laughs> And for years, I would be... <laughs> Who? Why? And for years, I would go, Guys, come on, no, I wasn't like that. Don't, don't say that. Oh, don't, you get the wrong impression. No, no. And then I saw the blooper reel. <laughs> and uh, they were right. I was... I, I couldn't keep it together a lot of the time. So... <laughs> Thank you, and I'm sorry that I disputed you. <laughs> Should we take another question? Uh, question? Yes, young man. Um, this question for Nice and of... loudly. Um, this is a question for all of you. What did you miss the most after your series ended? What did you miss the most when your series ended? I'm laughter? What, what do you miss the most? With the series, the, 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 the laughter, series. the laughter. It was, it was laughter all the time. We weren't, we weren't cut ups. We weren't, you know, playing practical jokes or anything like that. But we laughed every day, just about. I mean, it was just the most fun. I, uh, I. I didn't really miss anything at all. I was uh, glad to get the heck out of there. And, uh, now I'm stuck back with these guys again. No, no, I, I, you know, I think we all felt the same way. It was, it was the friendships that we all struck up and that it was always fun to go to work every day because you were gonna play with your friends all day. I mean, what a great job. Can you imagine going It wasn't work? like that on all the shows, Mike. Oh, yes, it was. No, it wasn't. I mean, not for us it was. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the other shows, the one that, you know, the one that wasn't like that on your show, Bill, be honest. Let's just say, no one... You know, 
us as some actors. <laughs> Go to work, learn their lines, very seriously about it. How do I love you? Gotta work it out. Uh, report. <laughs> How many ways can I say report? They work at it. There's a little smile here and there, but not a great deal of laughter because it's serious work. You're churning out entertainment for a lot of people. That's the professional point of view. We do things a little differently in America. American actors are a little different. <laughs> oh, I know. Let's go to another question. I've got leprosy. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> long time listener, first time caller. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask is, you know, so many observations and things to see out in space. How on earth did you guys deal with big data? But the second question I'd like to ask, you guys feel that as you want to. I'm just making a lot of money off the question. The, uh, the second thing I'd like to ask is, you know, I think we all like to hear the off-color stories and all the things that happen kind of behind the scenes. But that's not my second question. My second question is, Marina, what are you doing off the panel? That's your first good offer. <laughs> Up to now, they've been false offers, but this is well, sounds what genuine. What should, what, what should, like, I think there's a dinner there. I'm going to be an L.A. girl. I'm going to be an L.A. girl now. Watch this. What car do you drive? <laughs> what car you got? Starts with an S. Why? Starts with an S. Subaru. Subaru. Is it a Subaru? No, there's just two more numbers after that. An SK yeah, something. Close enough. S SL. <laughs> close enough. Okay. Is it Japanese? It's not. Good, because I don't do anything Japanese. Because <laughs> I don't do Japanese. You have to boycott all things Japanese and Chinese. Honestly, I'm not joking now, because they still kill the whales and the dolphins. <laughs> I think we're going to start with the words All PC. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't care about PC, I care about the dolphins and the whales. Oh. Uh, but, but, but the question is, I Marina, call, call Marina, Marina the I question, no, no, no hold on a second. <laughs> Marina, the, the answer to the question we want to hear is, what are you doing after the show? You know what? I'm hanging with my, my, my bros and sissies here, but um, thank you for the offer. We're going to file for Japanese how, food. How, Episodes was Genesis, where the entire crew was de-evolving. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. it's a yeah, yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. It's directed that. Oh, okay. it's... Yeah. Woo! Uh, so, yeah. I, I just wanted to know what, how you guys felt about that episode. I mean, obviously Michael's always in makeup, so he had to wear extra makeup, which when I was a young lad, it, scared me quite a bit. When so. you were a young lad. But Michael Dorn got to vomit on Dr. Crusher's face, so it kind of, yeah. So, what was your favorite part about that episode, if each one of you remembers? Gates, you seem to have a... She directed it. Her show. So. Oh, it was her show. Yeah. So, what was your favorite um, part of it? Was... <laughs> was watching Jonathan, who had been in makeup for maybe 24 hours as the eighth, and I remember, he was so nice, they were all so nice to me, because it really was arduous makeup, and Michael Westmore should have been nominated for an Emmy for that. He, he, he was amazing. I think he was. And, and Jonathan, 
women had been there for, I mean, for hours, and they were all so nice, but you were like walking around the bridge like I thought he was going to like start, you know, throwing things. But everybody was. Marina was in the water as the... Uh, amphibian. Amphibian, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, and to me, what I loved was I got to make the ship so different than it normally was. Like it could be dirty. You know, there were, there was like stuff on the floor and I got to look in the sick bay that I had been in that sick bay so long and we had never used like these jars. They were blue, red and stuff. And I went, I'm using those jars in a shop, you know? <laughs> so I was doing like weird things like that. So I loved it, but I, everyone was very I, indulgent. I'm fascinated by the, <laughs> by the description of what was going on with John. What were you doing, Jonathan, in that show? I had uh, de-evolved. I had come back to my uh, simian roots. Well, were, were you thinking of how to say report? I mean, what were you doing? <laughs> I took you up for that one, didn't I? <laughs> now, I was the only one who didn't change, and I really should have become an old laptop or something. <laughs> You know, I changed into into something I don't recognize, but I didn't have to go through the makeup. Well, you mean you, you came out as you? He became a reptilian, sir. Well, didn't that give away the whole... No, no, I, I, no, I'm saying I didn't have to get into actual makeup t to de-evolve. I just did a couple of scenes with her as Ward, and then somebody else, a stunt guy, did oh. all the other stuff. Because he was running and jumping and... He was all over they, the they just, yeah. Yeah, they just couldn't, they couldn't put me in makeup and then put me in another makeup at this, you know, so... Oh. Um, yeah, so I was lucky. You were. But I got to direct an iguana and spot the cat. And <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> they, they, they were so much did, easier to direct than some of these guys. <laughs> Denise, Denise, contribute. I wasn't in that one. Denise had gone by then. Oh, you weren't in there? I wasn't in that one. What had happened, Denise? She, she'd been gone. I, 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 why? I, what happened? I, I left. Uh, well, why? I mean, what happened? Oh, I, I just wanted to. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. Why not go there? What happened, Denise? Oh, the, these guys have heard the story too long. I'll, I'll tell you later tonight, though. Okay. <laughs> she came back a couple of times. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I came back, but I wasn't in oh, okay. uh, this one. We need another question. Did, uh, 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 my turn. Your turn. Um, first of all, I, can we get a big hand for the Salt Lake Pops for their amazing... Oh, oh yeah. yeah. How, uh, how generous of you to think of that, of none of us. No, and Jerry Goldsmith is smiling. Right. That was beautiful work. Young at heart, the whole 
I'm, I'm, I think she means you. So. We, we haven't got to your question yet. Okay, come on. So, do you guys have, do you guys have any theories on the after talking with fans on, on what it is about the series that appeals and is timeless? Here's the question. Oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> what, 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 what is appealing about the next generation to the audience? What, what are your theories about that? Uh, Denise? Not, this is a question wait, 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 for the, 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 the audience. Denise, the Denise, no, 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 well, that's true, but, but we all have an, it was asked of us by the charming lady. Um, <laughs> Denise, have you, have you got, a, got an idea of what appeals? You know, I, I, I think science fiction in, in general, I, you know, can, can, can be timeless. I, I, I mean, these are little morality fables that are, you know, um, told over and over again to remind us of our humanity. And so I don't think they ever really tire. And, you know, I, I think, I think uh, they need to be repeated and they need to, to the, the next generation, you know, hears them. And this is our, this is how we, you know, how we contain ourselves, how we, we you know, are human beings telling these tales. Or anything, you got a thought on that? Um, well, I, you know, I have to be honest, hands up in the air, I'm not a big sci-fi fan. I'm not, I'm not, you know, Steel Magnolias, I love. So that just goes to show what horrible taste I have in films. Um, I'm a Spurs fan. I'm going to strike you if you're an Arsenal to be down there to rip your throat out any minute. Um, but I think, I think that the, the stories that we told, like Denise said, they were kind of, they had a moral. They, they were, they were, they, they're as relevant today as they were then because we haven't fixed the world yet. We still have racism, we still have sexism, we still have, um, anti-gay feeling, we have all those things that we, we still have war, we still have drug addicts, we have all the things that we talked about in Star Trek and they're still relevant today. And now that we're in high death, it looks like we shot it yesterday. So it's kind of, you know, it's good, it's all good. But I think it's because the, we're still dealing with the same problems. Jonathan? All seriousness aside. Right. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's a bit of a cliche now, but I think it's Gene's vision of hope for the future that has yeah. resonated with that. I don't know. I think uh, they're just darn good stories. And we had some good writers, and uh, I think there's something about Star Trek. It just... Um, <coughs> connects with people in the most powerful way. And I, I you know, as, as we all know, it's gonna be in a year and a half or so, about 50 years it's been around. Wow, that's, I think there are kids in this audience today, little kids who are gonna grow up and there's gonna be Star Trek for them and new shows are gonna keep coming and it just has become a part of the fabric of the country. And uh, of the world, of the world. Michael. Uh, interesting, or not interesting enough, I don't know. Um, no. I, I, no, it's not. It's <laughs> whatever I'm going to say. Is exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, well, then that's it. No. Um, I, I, I used to think it was, you know, just, just good television, all that type of stuff, but something clicked uh, because we do, there's reunion shows and a lot of people and, are coming out. It's, it's, what Denise said and, and what we kind of echoed is they're, they're, they're little morality plays. There's always, you know, from, from the original to us, um, not so much after us, the, the shows were more... No, I'm just saying they got more into, into other things, into, you know, special effects and... Conflict. You know, a lot of conflict, you know, that's, 
that's drama, it's conflict. Uh, but each one is a morality play. And I think that kids today, and that say we grew up on it, they can sit down and watch a, an episode and get something out of it. Whatever it is, you know, like some, some, some type of story, some type of moral, moral about, well, we do this, we do that. And, uh, and I, didn't, I didn't really think about it until I was listening to all the kids and, and the older people that said, hey, you know what, I didn't watch it, but my mother sat me down and we watched this show. Family time. Family time, you know, and I think that's what it is, like, it's just a morality play. But it's also one of the few shows that the whole family could watch together. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, but, but each person, each episode, everybody will get something from it. Whereas, like, a lot of the science fiction we see now is about special effects. It's about getting bigger and bigger, and, and the stories are kind of lost in the... Uh, can, but I, can I say something? Oh, I'm sorry. Please, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, I think, I mean, I agree with everything that all of you guys have said. I also think... Um, as well, that space and the concept of something we don't really understand. I mean, that it, there's so many mysteries in the universe. And for me, it's, it takes my imagination to sort of imagine what would it be like to be on the moon, on Mars, on Saturn. Oh my God, they have a new planet they've discovered. I think that's also something that, certainly for me and a lot of the fans, they are people who think about, oh, there, there might be alternate universes out there and um, the way we are progressing already with technology and there's SpaceX and all of these things, it's the possibility that also, I think, is one of the reasons You know, no, um, I'm sorry. It's there's so popular. One other thing. Um, I really think, and, and seriously, uh, that there's something about the future and, and these stories about the future, particularly living in a world where most of us are frightened whether there's even going to be a future and um, We're frightened for our children that they're not going to have a future that the world that we've known and loved is not going to be here And the planet we've known and loved is not going to be here And I think the show says yes, it is it's, it's going to be a long future And it's going to be beautiful and great and I think it's encouraging in that way to people There's a magic There's a magic about science fiction because it seeks to explain the inexplicable. It seeks to offer some thing about what's out there, what the future is, and what those little green men might be. It offers an imaginative look at the future and a, an attempt at explaining what is at present. I... Hi. Hi. Well, just a bit. No, scare you there. <laughs> I have to be Talk. the most unpopular person in the room right now because I have to... I know, I know. You got it. I just wait. Can I just... Where, where, I have one you? very important question yes, to ask everybody. Yes. I lost my glasses from the... going to this room. So if you see or step on black framed glasses that have progressive lenses, please give them back to me, okay? I'll say really quickly, it's going to continue on for a few more minutes, but we have to excuse Mr. Shatner. He has to catch a plane here. So we want to thank him for being here. Replacing Bill? Is that what's happening? No, not me. No way. No. Yeah, oh. I'm not good at that. Yeah. 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 No, I, I'm terrible. Yeah. But what, what's, uh, well, I can say. Uh, do we have a question? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, yeah, sir. You, sir. Where's Eleni? Eleni Buise. Buise. Oh, there you go. Then it's me. I'm going to speak to her in Greek now. So yeah, but talk about yourself. <laughs> Okay. 
Because well, Eleni had a question, didn't you, Eleni? Yes. Uh, I did actually. I had a lot of trouble when I came over because I had your accent. Oh. But here's my question. We all hear about the nice moments and we live with the morals of the stories. But there must have been a line that annoyed you, really. A, li a line? What was the worst line for you? Captain, he's hiding something. <laughs> Said it. Sit down, boys. Sit down. The last time I ever said it, old, sorry, Sir Old Baldy said to me, he must have got out of bed the wrong side that morning. We know that, you stupid cow. There's more. You waste of space. And then he looked at me and he went and hid behind Brent. <laughs> Your Majesty. I'm just an actress, okay? I don't human strength, you idiot. <laughs> that was my least favourite line, yes. I loved every line I said. <laughs> Not that I knew what any of them meant. Now, my least favourite was. Um, I protest, I am not a merry man. Dates? Uh, I, I, I can't remember what was my least favorite line, but um, I think one of the weirdest things I ever had to do was to fall in love with a lamp. Everybody, just wait. <laughs> but there's a charge. <laughs> I have never, in my 30 years, in the theatre, been treated like this. So, I see four lights. <laughs> It is perfectly ergometrically designed throne, but rattled as if nothing was happening. <laughs> and he, under his breath, he would say, Jonathan, oh, Jonathan, 30 years at the Royal Shakespeare Company for this. <laughs> True story. We have time for a couple more questions. A couple more questions. Uh, yeah, who's, uh, who's first over there? Uh, yes, the young woman with the purple hair. Hi. I love saying that. The young woman with the purple hair. Is that your uh, actual hair color? I wish. It's very natural looking. <laughs> um, I'm Lucy. Uh, this is for all of you. Is there a particular aspect of your character that you really related to? At all. <laughs> we were the same height. <laughs> I came from a failed Earth colony.
I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Just like your character. that you would like to change, and why? This is not us. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, they were great! Woo! Woo! I think on the Star Trek movies, uh, we did pretty well. to uh, not to fuck it up, if you know what I mean. Bring you to hell. That's what I meant. And it's Easter. Don't share! It's always fun. What? I thought every... I, th I thought it was compulsory to be a Mormon in those days. Anyway, I understand that there's a rumor that uh, you're shooting a new wharf thing. It was an internet thing. You a guy know, just, a guy just said it on the. So you were late. No, no, no I, I, it has a, there's a reason because uh, I feel that maybe we might be repeating a lot of the same mistakes we did when the original Star Trek came out. Some of the shows were dangerous. They were actually dangerous to do, uh, and maybe we don't have a space program really anymore. We don't have. A Star Trek really on the screen. Okay, what are you going to do to push the envelope? What can you do to push the envelope for the stories? As far as Star Trek goes? As far as Star Trek goes. Uh, I, you know, if there was, if something like that came about, I would, I, I would go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, what we started and what Gene started, which was, uh, yeah, excuse me, I'm talking to you. <laughs> matter of pushing the envelope because I think that's what happens with a lot of science fiction these days is it's their the idea to push the envelope to get bigger and bigger effects and just you know just go crazy with this stuff. I would go back to telling stories like every I mean it seemed to work with, with the original and next generation so I mean that's what it's about is each one would be a story. Just a, a moralistic or a, a self-contained story that people can watch. We have, we, you know, we have no, you know, we have no control, right? You know, we have no say in this at all. Right. Right. If all of you got together, though, maybe. No. Okay. <laughs> JJ is king now. Actually, no, he's more than king. He's the emperor. <laughs> My name is Jamie. What was your favorite original Star Trek episode? You mean the original show? Yeah. I, I like the one with Frank Gorshin with the uh, split face. Oh, yeah. I like it. What was that in the show? Oh, my face. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite was, was the, uh, said. the, the, uh, the one with John Collins. No, the journey to Babel with um, uh, the Dolomite of Elise. What's her name? Uh, France Nguyen. Oh, yeah. Wow, that was, that was a good episode. <laughs> Should we, uh, one more question? One more question, please. Make it good. Uh, the pressure's on you. What? It's there. All right. This question's for you. For me? Yeah. Did you ever find your missing hot dog cart from Night Court? <laughs> My, my, my impression of Brent. Gummy bears. <laughs> that was really good. 
You know something? That was the best question so far. I never did find that, no. Do you want me to? Yeah, I'd, li I'd like you to. Well, apparently, uh, as much fun as we're having at this convention, and it is a fantastic convention, <laughs> it's going to get even better on Saturday when, yes, Patrick Stewart.